security risks that require constant vigilance. An anonymous uh, source told The Guardian last year, and I quote, Prisoners are bigger due to steroids. Spice turns inmates into zombies, and the social media, they might know where we live. Close quote. Managing these challenging circumstances places significant physical demands on younger staff members, let alone those in their seventh decade, who may have dedicated nearly half a century of their lives to their roles in the prison system. Certainly, there is no other profession which places such duties and expectations on staff. Pension ages for police officers, the fire service, and the military stand at a dignified 60 less in certain circumstances, where prison officers are required to work an additional eight years. The Prisoners Officers Association has rightly voiced concerns regarding the prolonged exposure of frontline staff in their 60s to this environment. Research from PTSD UK indicates that UK prison officers face a significantly high risk of developing post-traumatic stress disorder compared to most other occupations. Burnout characterised by emotional exhaustion, depersonalisation and a diminished sense of personal accomplishment is also more prevalent among prison officers. Given the widely acknowledged risks faced by officers on the job, there is a clear need for increased support. A crucial aspect of this is ensuring timely and dignified retirement. Moreover, for Mark Fairhurst, Chair of the PO, this is a primary reason for the prison system's recruitment crisis. Fairhurst states that for many 18-year-olds, the thought of working on the prison state for half a century deters them from seeking to join the service. The POA has also found poor retirement prospects are central to their experienced hemorrhage of long-serving and experienced officers lost to the service. Meanwhile, years of austerity and real-term pay cuts have intensified pressure on prison officers, resulting in overcrowding and understaffing. This can lead to prisons failing to meet minimum staffing requirements for a safe, fully operational establishment. It is imperative to acknowledge that the challenges faced by prison officers do not cease upon retirement. Many may carry physical injuries, mental scars or emotional burdens accumulated over years of service. They deserve the opportunity to retire at an age where they can enjoy the fruits of their labour, spend quality time with their families and pursue personal interests without the constraints of age-related limitations. Thus, presiding officer, I wholeheartedly support the 68 is too late campaign as we cannot in good conscience allow the situation to persist. It is incumbent to prioritise the well-being of our prison officers, both in the present and in retirement. Let us not forget the years of service rendered to our communities. 68, retirement age, is an act of profound injustice and disrespect. President officer, I support Polly McNeill's motion. Thank you, Mr Gibson. I now call Sharon Dowie, who is joining us remotely, to be followed by Katie Clark. Ms Dowie. Thank you, presiding officer. I want to thank Pauline McNeill for bringing this debate to the Chamber and I also thank her for bringing the Prison Officers Association to Holyrood at the end of March, where we heard from them directly on their campaign. The issue of retirement age for these dedicated professionals has sparked widespread concern, particularly in light of the challenging conditions they face daily. The Scottish Conservatives understand the demanding nature of the work carried out by the prison officers and we fully understand and appreciate the sentiment that 68 is too late for officers to be conducting frontline work. It's incredibly demanding work, it's very physical and it takes a real toll. I've spoken with prison officers and recently visited HMP Kilmarnock and I have great admiration for the work that prison officers do. The broader context is also important. The SNP government's justice failures has seen crime levels spiral upwards, overcrowded prisons, delayed infrastructure projects and heightened risks within our prisons. In such a deteriorating environment, expecting officers to continue frontline duties until the age of 68 is asking too much. Prison officers are also faced with increasing gang violence. A new study by the SPS found that gang violence has been fuelled by steroids inhaled through vapes. These steroids were identified in every prison that the study looked at. With many premises over capacity and understaffed, prison officers are often faced with terrifying situations. As highlighted to me by one of the POA campaigners, a situation has occurred where the ratio was 66 prisoners to two female prison officers, and at one point just one officer was left alone with the prisoners. The Chief Executive of the SPS also warned that officers are facing significant danger from organised crime gang members. While we agree there should be action on the pension age, the Scottish Government also must look at what they can do for prison officers. They can ensure that prison officers are not subjected to such adverse work conditions. Measures such as providing body-worn cameras for officer safety can be implemented. 
reversing recent setbacks like the loss of these cameras when HMP Kilmarnock was nationalised by the SNP. In conclusion, I agree that 68 is too late. It's a long time to expect officers to work in the front line, especially in such harsh and difficult conditions. But it's also important that the Scottish Government addresses the pressing and systemic issues facing our prison system. The well-being and safety of our prison officers must receive greater focus from the Government. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Dowie. I call Katie Clark to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Ms Clark. Heading off, and I congratulate my colleague Pauline McNeill on securing this important debate. The age at which prison officers can retire from the service at present and collect their pension is set at 67 and is due to increase to 68. And whilst the retirement age continues to be linked to the UK state pension age, prison officers also face the real prospect that this could be delayed even further. As it stands, 67 or 68 is too late and puts prison officers themselves, the colleagues for whom they provide backup support and the prisoners they look after all at unacceptable levels of risk. The omission of prison officers from the list of uniformed services for whom a pension age of 60 was agreed to be appropriate, recognising the unique toll that such professions take was a significant error. As Polly McNeill has said, the Hutton Review in 2011 concluded that uniform services where age was historically lower for pension to reflect the unique nature of the work should have had a pension age of 60 for prison officers. And of course, we must also appreciate that in other sectors, for example, in psychiatric hospitals, there historically has also been lower pension ages. Firefighters, prison officers and the armed sources were all included in 2011, yet prison officers were excluded. The current retirement age fails to recognise the unique pressures on prison staff. And it's abundantly clear from speaking to prison staff and reading the many responses they provided to the Prison Officers Association all member survey on this issue that the situation as it stands is unintenable, untenable and unsafe. Over 90% of prison officer association members surveyed said they believe they will not be able to continue to work until the age of 68, with more than 95% fearing that they will need to leave their job before they reach this age due to the considerable physical and mental health challenges they face during their work. In the words of one prison officer, by the time we reach 68, we will already be suffering from ill health, hip and knee issues, and the stress that comes from working in the job. This includes strokes and heart attacks and high blood pressure. Most of us can barely live until our 70s. Another describes how they are already struggling to cope at the age of 49 and the injuries they frequently receive in the course of their duties are taking longer to heal from. Yet this officer will still be required to work a further 19 years of service before they are permitted to pick up their pension. It is clear that the mental and physical impact of carrying out these roles is incredibly high. And as has been said by Sharon Dowie, the prison environment in which officers work is becoming increasingly dangerous. Prison officers work in an ever-expanding prison population, responding to high levels of prisoner, prisoner violence, often instigated by those high on psychotic substances. And as has already been said in this debate, prisons are becoming more dangerous with the presence of drugs and indeed the increasing numbers of members of organised crime gangs. All this is coupled with a Scottish prison service that's understaffed and overstretched. I urge the Scottish Government to meet with the Prison Officers Association to discuss these issues and thereafter to make appropriate recommendations to the UK Government. Thank you, Ms Clark. I call Maggie Chapman to be followed by Audrey Nicholl. Ms Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to thank Pauline McNeill for her motion and securing this debate today. It was my pleasure to co-host, along with Pauline and others, other cross-party colleagues, a drop-in session in Parliament before the Easter recess with the Prison Officers Association. 
I know that many colleagues will have taken the chance to have a chat with prison officers about the work they do and the conditions within which they must do that work. In those con conversations, I heard prison officers talk about the physically demanding nature of their role, something that staff in their seventh decade, indeed approaching their eighth decade, should not be expected to undertake. Prisons may be controlled environments, but that does not mean that they are safe environments. We've heard already this afternoon, and in many different debates in this chamber, of the violence and abuse that takes place in our prisons. I would argue that such conditions alone are justification enough for a whole-scale review of our prison system, what and indeed who it is for, why we are still using a carceral system that has not fundamentally changed for decades, if not centuries. But that is maybe a debate for another day. Today, we have the chance to come together as a parliament and stand in solidarity with workers who do a difficult and demanding job. We have the chance to make a clear, united call to the, to the UK Government that we agree with the Prison Officers Association's campaign that 68 is indeed too late. Pauline McNeill has mentioned, but I think it's worth reiterating, that prison officers, as a uniform service, should have been included in the 2011 Furness Review of Public Service Pensions. This review stated quite clearly that uniform services should have a pension age of 60, to reflect the unique nature of the work they do. Pauline McNeill outlined very clearly many of the increasing pressures on our prisons, all of which make a retirement age of 68 even less appropriate. Making prison officers work until they are 68 is risky, and it lays the foundations for problems in the service in coming years. Experienced prison officers might decide to leave their roles in their 40s or 50s because they want to get another job before getting close to 60 when employment prospects will decline. This is not good for ensuring younger workers have experienced colleagues to support them as they get to grips with a job that many of us, not many of us, would probably want to do. It is not good for the service as a whole. It is also likely that sickness absence rates will increase putting additional strain on remaining colleagues and potentially making prisons even more dangerous. This cannot be the future we want for the service. I do hope that we can, all of us, be clear in our commitment to ensure that prison officers are included in the list of uniform services with a retirement age of 60. I also urge the Cabinet Secretary, in her closing, to commit to engaging with the Prison Officers Association and others so that we might explore what we can do to support prison officers until we get the change we need at Westminster. Presiding Officer, I will close with the words of a prison officer who took part in a survey undertaken by the POA earlier this year. I am aged 59 at the moment and have 30 years of experience in working in various establishments. The job that I am required to do has had a lasting mental and physical impact on me, in particular the latter years. The thought of having to go to 67 or 68 fills me with, with dread, as I feel that I will be less capable of, what is doing, or, or, of, what, of doing what is demanded of me. It is not an environment for anybody over the age of 60. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Chapman. I call Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Carol Mockin. Ms Nicholl. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm also pleased to speak in this debate today, and I thank Pauline McNeill for bringing uh, it forward. And I commend the 68 is too late campaign that is seeking to address a long-standing anomaly where prison officers in the UK are unable to access their pension until they are 68 years old. And as a former emergency services worker, I recognise the strength of feeling and support behind the campaign. I am astounded at the appalling position taken by UK ministers who view 68 as an appropriate age for prison officers to retire on the grounds that a prison is a controlled environment, completely failing to understand the complexities and challenges of managing a changing 21st century prison population. The UK Government must bring about pension justice for our frontline prison staff, and I lend my weight to the efforts to secure this change. And today, I want to continue the theme of well-being and acknowledge the commitment of prison officers in Scotland, highlighted at a recent event that I sponsored in the Parliament on behalf of Aid and Abet, a charity working with ex-prisoners. The event celebrated the publication of The Grood Prison Officer, a collection of reflections written by ex-prisoners 
all now practitioners and educators in the criminal justice field. And their personal stories offer an insight into the importance of developing a rehabilitative culture in prison that derives from their empathy, compassion and respect that is shown by prison officers towards them, profoundly impacting their lives and in some cases probably saving their lives. And they described what I would call discretionary effort, the lifeblood of every organisation where staff go just above and beyond their role, day in, day out. If workers do not feel that that is recognised and acknowledged, they will eventually withdraw it. And I want to pick up on this point in the context of today's debate. In a recent lecture entitled, We Are the we asked for workers, we got humans. The former Chief Constable of Lancashire Constabulary, Andy Rhodes, set out a compelling argument for placing mental health and well-being at the forefront of every operational and organisational decision. The context was policing, but this applies across other bodies of public-facing workers, and in particular, I would argue, prison staff. He spoke of the importance of embedding organisational justice so that a workforce is given the protection and support it deserves and is better able to respond to the public in a competent and compassionate way. And this ties closely with the survey findings in the 68 is too late report that highlights the impact prolonged exposure to the prison environment has on frontline staff, in particular those required to continue working to 67 and 68 years of age. And the report includes some powerful quotes shared with the POA, including and the one that Maggie Chapman uh, used in her contribution, and I'm going to repeat it now. I am aged 59 at the moment and have 30 years of experience in working in various establishments. The job that I'm required to do has had a lasting mental and physical impact on me, in particular the latter years. The thought of having to go to 67 or 68 fills me with dread, as I feel that I will be less capable of doing what is demanded of me. It is not an environment for anybody over the age of 60. I would have felt exactly the same. Presiding officer, to conclude, I wish the Prison Officers Association well in their campaign, and I hope today's debate does shine a light on the injustice being faced by prison staff in Scotland and the UK. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Nicholl. And I now call Carol Mochen, who will be the last speaker before I ask the Cabinet Secretary to respond. Ms Mochen. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, and as I begin my contribution, can I also thank my colleague Polly McNeill for bringing this important debate to the Chamber. I know she is a strong campaigner on these matters and will continue to stand firmly on the side of prison officers in Scotland. I was very privileged to have the opportunity to meet with the Prison Officers Association Scotland members in the Parliament just last month, and I've ha I had some excellent discussions about what challenges are presented to both prison officers and service delivery as a result of retirement age remaining at 68. In setting out my position today, I start by firmly reiterating my support, as I did to the members, for this campaign. 68, as we've heard across the chamber today, is too late. The UK government ministers must act and Scottish Government Ministers must really redouble any efforts it is currently making to deliver this much-needed change in retirement age to 60. As Prison Officers Association Scotland's report ahead of today's debate states, and I quote, prison officers are manifest manifestly a uniform service, and as such, it is clear to me, presiding officer, that they should be treated in the same manner as other uniformed services and see their retirement age return to 60 without detriment to their pension. Indeed, the report that we've all read acknowledges that this was previously the case and due to a 2011 review which omitted prison officers from uniformed services, they are now expected to work until 68. Now, prison officers have explained to me the mental, mental and physical challenges associated with working in the prison setting until that age, and other members have described that well. And I do fully agree that it is totally unacceptable and indeed untenable to continue. 
In their report, uh, the Prison Officers Association highlighted that over 90 per cent of those surveyed believed 6 to 8 is too late, and indeed over 95 per cent have concerns that they will not be able to work until 6 to 8 due to the physical and mental demands associated with this extremely challenging job. And I do think across the benches we all agree um, that this is no way to treat our prison officers who deliver an absolutely essential service and they must be treated with dignity as they, repo, repo, as they reach their retirement age um, and that they deserve to have this challenging profession treated in the same way as other professions in the, the way that we describe as uniformed uh, officers. Presiding officer, it cannot be forgotten that prisons, as we have heard, can be uh, very violent places, despite them being described as managed environments, and that officers are indeed um, uh, expected to attend regularly incidents and often violent incidents. By their own admission, prison officers are rightly concerned about their ability to provide physical support to their other, perhaps younger college, uh, colleagues as they um, encounter situations uh, as they start to uh, approach their 60s, and that they have concerns for their safety and the safety of others. Um, we really cannot continue to expect or we hope that the UK government can take a position where they understand that this is a risk to the physical and mental health of these officers and others. And the UK government must act, it must act, and it must listen to others who are lobbying them. And I hope that the Scottish government will continue to do that as constructively as they can to achieve progress. In concluding, presiding officer, I thank Polly McNeill for bringing the debate to the Chamber and also to all the other members who I know support this motion. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you, Ms Malkin. I now call on Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance to respond to the debate. Up to seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Okay. Thank you very much, President Officer. And I very much welcome the opportunity to respond to this uh, vitally important debate. And I do want to place on record my thanks to Pauline McNeill for tabling the motion and to the, the many speakers uh, who have made a valuable uh, contribution this afternoon. And also uh, pay tribute to members who have worked together on a, a cross-party basis uh, to support uh, the POA Scotland uh, in their quest. Uh, I very much uh, agree that 68 uh, is too late uh, and as members uh, will expect, I do meet uh, with the POA and will continue to do so. We all agree that prison officers play a vital role in our justice system, helping to ensure that our prisons are safe, secure and stable environments uh, for prisoners and staff. They are very much uh, hidden in plain sight. They are a hidden part uh, of our criminal justice system. And I think the more that we can do together to show the nature of their work, the nature of the challenges and the value of their work uh, to the general population in Scotland, the better. In my uh, time, my tenure as Cabinet Secretary for Justice, I have taken the opportunity to visit every uh, prison in Scotland and I have seen the dedication, professionalism and engagement uh, from prison officers. And whether it was in my past as a prison-based social worker or my present uh, as a Justice Secretary, I have seen them working in a way that is person-centred, inclusive, trauma-informed, rights-based and every day that makes a difference to people's lives. And I was always struck, but not surprised, by the words of an individual in custody in HMP Greenock, uh, quoted in a recent HMIPS report, when they said that staff have been exceptional in helping me through my sentence. All the staff are wonderful and easy to speak with. This is my first time in prison, and I have felt supported at each step of the way. And of course, Audrey Nicholl uh, spoke to the work of the Good Prison Officer uh, Project, where people uh, with experience of incarceration spoke very powerfully in their personal testimonies about how prison officers have helped them turn their life around. So, President officer, the Scottish Government and the Scottish Prison Service fully recognise that prison officers work in very challenging environments and at times uh, put themselves in danger and at risk. We have a high and rising prison population and behind the numbers, as members uh, have accurately reflected, there is increasing complexity. 
uh, whether that's you know, the increasing numbers in custody with links to serious and organised crimes, challenges around drugs and psychoactive substances, and increased demands for social care due to an ageing uh, prison population. And the Scottish Government and partners across the justice sector, including the SPS, we are fully committed uh, to tackling these issues and reducing uh, the impact and harm caused. And you'll be relieved, uh, so know, so I'm not going to repeat the content of the two previous uh, statements I've made uh, to Parliament on these matters. But I very much recognise that prison officers carry out frontline operational duties, including control and restraint, until the state pension age, which is due to rise to 68. And this is hugely challenging and carries with it significant stresses and strains. And of course, the Scottish Prison Service take the safety and security of its staff extremely seriously. It is a matter that I discuss with the SPS on a regular basis in terms of staff um, wellbeing. And SPS provides support to staff to remain at work in meaningful employment when they cannot undertake full contractual role, including workplace adjustments and redeployment to alternative roles across the organisation. And every effort it will be made to accommodate requests for a change or adjustment where the request is evidence-based. However, that does not in any way detract from the point of principle that prison officers eh, deserve parity with other uniformed services. Because it is well established... Uh, yes, of course, Mr Green. Jamie Green. Thank you very much. And uh, can I first of all apologise to Pauline McNeill for missing the opening minute of her speech. It was a bit of a lunch stampede. It was hard to get back in the chamber. But I've been listening with the great intent to the debate. It's an area of interest to me, a formal role in this place, and I say I'm very sympathetic to what's been said and concur with a lot of what's been said. But on the issue of, of uh, parity with other uh, uniform services, one of the big pushbacks over the years that this has been rumbling on in Westminster is that uh, various government ministers uh, have said that the reason they're able to reduce the pension age for police officers is that they up front have been uh, all along paying higher uh, contributions to their pension as, as employees during the course of their career. Is it the case in Scotland that police officers here do have to pay higher contributions to allow them to retire early? And would that have to be the case, therefore, for prison officers as well? It's more of a technical question rather than a policy intended one. Cabinet Secretary. Um, Sign officer, I'm happy to write to Mr Green on that matter because it is indeed a technical matter. Um, in terms of prison officers, they do not have a separate pension scheme. Um, they are part of uh, that UK-wide civil service pension scheme that all devolved civil servants um, are part of. Uh, what I would say that was deeply regrettable is that the Hutton Review, in my opinion, what it did not take account of was the 1952 Prisons Act that said that prison officers should have equal protection and privileges uh, and rights and authorities as that of police officers. Um, but there was no account um, taken of that. Um, Sign officer, it is of course uh, well established, and many members have articulated it, that occupations, some occupations are restricted by capacity and age due to the physical demands um, of those roles, making it untenable uh, to expect them to their duties to be carried out until state uh, pension age. And this was recognised by the Public Service Pensions Act in 2013, which at that time set the age for 60 for firefighters, police officers and armed forces. Prison officers, as I say, don't have their own uh, dedicated pension scheme. They're part of that wider UK civil service uh, pension scheme. But over the years, the Scottish Prison Service and the Scottish Government have strongly supported the position of POE Scotland on this issue. Uh, we oppose the changes to public pensions following the Hutton Inquiry, and in particular the, the requirement that prison officers uh, should have the normal retirement age of 68. Successive Cabinet Secretaries for Justice have made representations uh, to the UK Government. We will continue to do so, raising concerns uh, around the physical demands of, of the prison officer role. The UK Government have consistently maintained uh, their position uh, that there is not, and this isn't my position, it's their position, that there's not a sufficiently strong case to make an ongoing special provision uh, for operational prison staff. However, 
I think the testimony and the contributions uh, of members across this chamber today uh, would, I politely state, uh, beg to differ. So, to conclude, uh, presiding officer, I know time is pressing. I do very much want to acknowledge the work of POA Scotland uh, on behalf of their members. I would like just to, to point out that prison officers in Scotland do have the right to strike unlike um, England uh, and Wales. They have a very constructive uh, partnership agreement with the Scottish Prison Service uh, that has been in operation um, for over uh, 20 years. And I uh, very much uh, welcome the, the POA's support in bringing HMP Kilmarnock uh, into the Scottish Prison Service uh, family. Uh, I would just end, President Officer, by reiterating the, the great value that we place in the work that prison officers do uh, to keep our prison safe and stable. Their commitment and dedication makes a difference to people's lives every day. And I just want to put on record yet again just how much that I appreciate everything they do. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And for members' cooperation with our limited time this lunchtime. And with that, that concludes the debate. And I suspend this meeting until 2 p.m. Thank you.
Make one check, one two. Yeah, all work.